uh, let me say to you, I have been uh, delayed uh, trying to uh, honor the wishes of uh, Giselle, who uh, asked me uh, not to respond, not to say anything. Uh, so for those of you who were overwhelmingly concerned uh, that I hadn't said anything, uh, had not given any defense, was because I was honoring uh, what it is that uh, Giselle desired. Uh, because of mounting moments that have happened in social media, I thought it prudent uh, that I not remain silent so that my silence would not be confused with consent. Um, let me open by saying, those of you who know me, uh, I'm always a straight shooter. So as a consequence, you need to know from the jump tonight is not an apology. Tonight, I'm not asking for anybody's forgiveness. Tonight is not about a confession. Tonight is for clarity. I uh, have um, for five seasons, I've never said anything about Potomac. For five seasons, not said a word in a sermon, in a post, in a subtweet, in a text. I average at least 56 interviews a year. And in no condition and in no term have I ever mentioned the Housewives of Potomac, good, bad, or ugly, in support. A couple of things um, that I wanted to share um, that I think prudent for our discussion today. I have uh, long since uh, not been an advocate uh, for uh, many reality television shows because I don't think that it represents the best of who we are, uh, nor does it advance our progress, our maturity, and our brilliance. A bone of uh, contention uh, between uh, Giselle and I for years was about her participation in the show and how it is that I uh, did not support it. In uh, baby steps of uh, reconciliation, I agreed to be on it against my better judgment, against my wisdom, and even against my convictions. I wholeheartedly regret participating. And I want you to know that I will never be on the Housewives of Potomac or anything in that franchise ever again. But I wanted you to know why. Um, I took a couple of days to be sober of thought and clear of mind. So I would not, in fact, operate in uh, emotionalism, but in sound judgment. So I want to tell you why you will never see me on the Housewives of Potomac again. It has been a gross misrepresentation of my character, my ministry, and my humanhood. There are a couple of things that have happened this season that require immediate redress. Many of you who are watching bombarded me uh, with uh, accusations of abandoning my family, not being there for my girls, for their photo shoot, as if I was just in Atlanta frolicking around and participating in willful neglect. The truth of the matter is I was in South Africa. I was in South Africa coming back for the photo shoot and had a delay in Frankfurt, Germany for six hours. The producers knew it, the network knew it, and as a consequence, my flight did not land in enough time. And none of that was mentioned. None of it was brokered. None of it was represented. Secondly, um, what happened on Housewives of Potomac is that many of you misguidedly thought that it was in real time. It was, in fact, recorded a year ago in 2019. And so you saw uh, my children who uh, were not happy with me, but you didn't have context. It was their first day of school 
And this is the very first time in their entire lives at the first day of school, I was not present to pick them up or to take them. Any of you who have teenagers understand the emotional roller coaster of teenage girls. So consequence, I had just moved to Atlanta. And so it was adjustment for them and it was for me. They are absolutely daddy's girls. As a matter of fact, uh, they are here in Atlanta often and frequent and more than their school, they wear new birth t-shirts and hoodies almost every day. Faithfully, even while in Maryland, they watch their father on Sunday morning in worship. I have a very healthy relationship with my children, which I value and which I absolutely don't take for granted. The third thing that was uh, put out there pejoratively was uh, disparaging remarks made by my father-in-law, Mr. Curtis Graves, who is 83 years of age. He's 83 years of age and unlike many, I was raised old school, that you never disrespect elders. I honor him, he's an amazing man, has had incredible accomplishments and he has every right to feel protective over his daughter. I've been divorced for now 10 years and he and I have not had a heart to heart, man to man conversation about me breaking the heart of his baby girl. Anybody who is married or been married understands that working with in-laws is a process and it is a journey. So that was in fact, one of the very few times in 10 years that we have been in proximity. But I want on record uh, that I honor him. He's made tremendous strides in history. He is uh, my fraternity brother. And I want my children to always know uh, that I honor their grandfather and Giselle's father. I uh, then want to uh, move. Let me uh, make sure I'm on the right page of my binder because uh, you can't bring me receipts if I got the cash register. Mm. Uh, so um, let, let me uh, press the cash register. Yes, um, I dated a young lady in New York. In case you all missed it, I've been divorced for 11 years and single people date. When you date, sometimes it works and sometimes it didn't. In this instance, it did. Nothing immoral, illegal, or unethical took place. It did not work out. There is some clarity that needs to happen. I'm not married. I'm not engaged. So some of you have uh, a strange relationship with language. You can't have a mistress while you're single. So I never had a mistress. As a consequence, she has never been to visit me in Atlanta, never been to New Birth, never been in my home. I've never been in her home. Now, you would think that things um, just move forward and people move on. They don't. Um, so if we're going to show text messages, well, let's show all the text messages. Let's show the text messages um, of uh, the young lady asking to fly to Atlanta for my installation. Show the text message where I said, no, it's not a good idea. You're going to show the text message, show all the text messages where you asked to come down for Memorial Day. And I said, no. You can't come here. If you're going to show the text messages, show the text messages where you complained because I didn't open a door for you to speak on the word network. You're going to show the text message, show all of them, how it is that you wanted me to hire you to be on staff. I told you you weren't qualified. 
And so January, I brought in new staff members, three of them, uh, my assistant pastor, Colleen Lemons, my internet pastor, Kurt Vance Ross, and my emerging generations pastor, Kariana Turner. So if you're gonna show the text message, show the text message from January 5th, where you sent me in text, um, oh, I see you hired a young lady, you must be sleeping with her. To which I responded, no, I didn't even know her before I hired her. 56 people applied for the job and she emerged because she is competent and because she is capable. And so for you to insinuate it uh, is fraudulent. You're going to read the text messages. Uh, read the text messages where uh, you asked me to review your dissertation on Black women's empowerment. And I told you it needed a revision because it doesn't have depth. It doesn't have enough nuance. And there is no creativity. We're going to read the text. Read the text. How it is that uh, you sent this quote, receipts to 27 periodicals and blogs, hoping to sell a story. And of the 27 you sent it to, 25 dismissed it because they knew it had no merit, it had no weight. And so because doors were not opening, because you're chasing clout and an opportunity to get on a stage that gift and integrity necessity. You then sent it to the executive producers of Bravo. Sent it to the executive producers of Bravo. They didn't respond. So you sent it to every person in the cast. Your dissertation is on the empowerment of Black women. So the question is, if you're empowering Black women, why'd you send it to the entire cast and never send it to Giselle? You want to equip her and not break her or crucify her, and you thought something was awry, then the responsible thing to do is to go to that woman. But you didn't do that. It's OK. Um, what you uh, didn't uh, say in uh, passing out this information is that uh, you and your sister are starting a magazine, uh, very fledgling, no circulation, poor editing. And so my coy in answering you uh, about where I am and what I am doing, it's not as a friend, but because I didn't want it in publication and I didn't trust it obviously wisely uh, that it wouldn't be used otherwise because every person who had into it um, was Monique. So let's uh, go to that. Uh, Where's Monique? Oh, here she is. Uh, Monique um, Samuels, I've never met. Um, never shook her hand. Never been in the room with her. And yet she's assassinated my character with high level of ire, of anger and hostility, a man she's never met. Now, um, I've got to address this. Um, because on national, international television, you've labeled me a holy whore. I think is the word you used, holy whore. Um, and so I need to give some address to that. Uh, I'm not sleeping with any woman in my church. And I have no babies in my church. And I have no inappropriate relationship with any woman in my church. Now, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble reading my own writing. Um, oh, here it is. Um, so I, I understand um, what the hostility was about and why the redirect of attention uh, was on me. The redirect of attention on me, um, you teamed up with your best friend who rest in peace has gone on to be with the Lord and uh, generated a story um, because you wanted to redirect because uh, you thought a story was getting ready to break that your baby is from your trainer. And that's what got your husband upset because he thought Giselle leaked. And 
I want to tell you, Monique and Chris, it is not Giselle who leaked that, but uh, Monique, your best friend, Gigi. Uh, we, we had nothing to do with it. Uh, you came uh, hostile and angry, and it was misdirected rage. Misdirected rage um, because um, uh, you, you live in a house with a man who has anger management, uh, who doesn't mind uh, expressing volatile behavior. And everything that I'm saying tonight is um, not conjecture. Uh, this is not murder. Uh, this is uh, self-defense. Uh, and so on Sunday, for the first time in five years, I'm inviting my audience to watch the reunion, Housewives of Potomac, where you will see Monique's husband try to attack my wife, my ex-wife, Ann Robin. And uh, security had to be called and he had to be subdued. And I'm very concerned. Um, Monique, um, you all have uh, my phone number as you expressed on the show, um, but I had you all's address. And uh, because of grace, uh, I didn't uh, respond to that. Um, Chris, um, you've got to, um, you got to take care of CTE. Yeah. Some of your former uh, teammates contacted me, they're concerned. I said, Jamal, please don't respond um, because CT is a progressive degenerative disease it's from a history of uh, trauma to the brain. Uh, and so just last week, you had an outbreak again of verbally assaulting a black woman in Safeway. We have the footage of that, but uh, I'm not going to air that. But I'm asking you to please get help. Uh, I've tracked down your pastor, so all of what I'm saying is in love, so that your pastor can uh, help you uh, get the help uh, that is needed and that is necessary. Uh, none of this. Um, uh, really ne necessitated happening. I've not bothered any of you. I've not said anything disparaging against any of you. I've not attacked any of you. Um, but I thought it was necessary for a couple of reasons. Um, I thought it was necessary because of the failures of my past. It made the accusations of the present believable. And uh, many of you began writing on my social media with no information, began attacking me with no information, start going all the way in with no information. And I wanted believers to know that no matter what it is that you did in your past, you can outlive it in your present. Now, regrettably, both of you who have said the most vile, nasty, and negative things did it behind scripture. You did it under the guise of being saved, not calling for prayer, but immediately calling for crucifixion. I didn't say that I was perfect, nor do I pretend to be, um, but don't come for me unless I invite you. All of us are in a journey of a process of trying to be better, trying to work out and I, and one of them. And so uh, you have to forgive me um, because um, I'm not gonna hold you long. Pastor, Pastor why are you running? I'm running because I gotta get ready because Saturday I gotta feed 8,000 families in Atlanta who don't have groceries. I think I gotta announce that here because none of these bloggers are gonna write about that. I gotta go. Because as soon as I finish that, I got to open up Christmas City for a thousand disadvantaged children whose parents are incarcerated, they're in foster care, or their parents have been laid off in COVID. I got to go uh, because I got to go further, make sure that uh, by January 5th, we elect two senators from the state of Georgia and flip the state and change the nation. I got to go because I'm not called to entertainment. I'm called to empowerment. 
So I know that uh, many of you will still have stuff to say. I am not here to convince you. What I am here to say is I wish we would expend as much energy pushing positive than we do pushing negative. I wish when one of us falls or makes a misstep, we will cover them, protect them, and then push them. I wish that at some point or another, we would mature and reason together. I, uh, I live in Atlanta, but I'm from Baltimore. I want to wish all of you a Merry Christmas.